You're watching BBC News. The latest update on inflation is due out in the next few seconds. Julie Peacock is here with me now. Well, just tell us where we are at the moment. Well, what we're expecting to see is another possible fall in those inflation figures, almost down to zero. Nobody's quite sure. Some people say 0.1%. Others saying it could even fall as low as zero. Whether you think that's a good or a bad thing very much depends on which side of the fence you're sitting. Deflation sometimes can be quite good. It means there's more money in our pockets to spend. Although, as other people have pointed out that means that our debts are still larger in real terms. Well, we can go now to, for the latest figures to Richard Campbell, who is from the ONS. Richard, what can you tell us? What, what are the figures just now? Good morning. Uh, the rate of inflation in the year to February stood at 0.0%. In other words, the Consumer Prices Index was unchanged on a year ago. So that is really quite a flat figure. Was that what you expected? Well, the market expectations was for 0.1%, so we've come in a little bit below that. However, we're broadly in line with uh, the Bank of England's expectations as set out in their last inflation report. And it is worth noting as well is that while the rate is zero, prices have still risen very slightly. However, this is rather lost in the rounding of the numbers. Yeah, because that's one point. Is once we take out the, the falling price of oil from these figures and, and the food, how... How low is the figure? Are we seeing prices rising and to what extent? Well, if you take out uh, the likes of uh, inflation for motor fuels and for food and for your uh, energy bills and for alcohol and tobacco, um, we have what many economists call core inflation. Now, that is uh, going up at 1.2%. So the sort of things that we have to buy all the times that we have to pay money for, those have been falling in price and driving inflation down. However, the underlying level of prices is a bit higher. So uh, you say this is pretty much in, in keeping with expectations, so no real cause for concern among people that we could see a, a deflation spiral? Well, yes, you're, you're right. We're broadly on track with where people expected us to be. Last month was a record low rate of inflation. We've seen another record low again. Now, putting this in sort of a longer-term historic context, based on comparable estimates of inflation that we have, this is the uh, lowest rate of price increase we've seen in 55 years since the turn of the 1960s, when we saw a brief period of deflation. So this is, this is really um, quite a historic figure, would you say? Well, abs absolutely. It's uh, the lowest rate that we have seen on official record and the lowest rate on comparable estimates in 55 years. I think what will be important for people is the continuing fall in motor fuel prices and food prices. And do you think that this is going to lead to an increase in spending? Do you think that this is a, what some people have been calling good, good deflation? Well, as you say, when people often talk about uh, deflation being a negative issue, it's because it, if it puts people off spending money now, if they delay purchases for a while, that can have a knock-on impact on uh, the productivity of the country and that's on people's wages and so on. Now, the main falls in prices we've seen are for food and for motor fuels, where we're continuing to see record falls. Now, these are purchases that people can't really put off. We all have to eat, we all have to travel. So a little bit more of price falls in these areas won't be bad things for people. Thanks very much for, for updating us on those figures. Thank you. Well, the other figures that have come out are the um, figures released this morning from the OS, uh, the house price index for January, and they show that UK house prices have increased by nearly 8.5%. Now, there's no doubting that getting onto the property ladder is a daunting prospect, with the average price of a first-time home now in excess of £200,000. That means that many of the younger buyers are left feeling priced out of the market. Well, Julie Peacock is, is still here, and a figure of 0%, I mean, a lot of people say, well, that's a good thing, prices aren't going up. Well, that's right, and it, it is in the short term giving us more money to spend in our pockets, and that means that we're more likely to spend, spend money, our money's going further. There's a slight feel-good factor there. Um, what people have been concerned about is just how long this is going to last, because if it lasts for a long time, then we could see people starting to put off when they make purchases because they're looking for the prices to fall. However, in this case, in the UK economy, that's unlikely and it's because the reasons for the the fall here I mean it's mainly down to falling out uh, oil prices and the fact that food is getting much cheaper because of these supermarket price wars and that means that um, 
what we're seeing here is that people are, um, are, are have more money to spend, but we're not seeing this down to one of the, the concerns would be if this was a if the economy was in free fall, it was a catastrophic uh, damage to the economy. That's not happening here. So we're looking to see possibly people will be spending more, and that should actually boost the economy slightly. When was it last this low? <laughs> Well, it was last this low in the 60s, and we're talking about a 55-year low. So this is really, um, a, you know, quite a, a, a historic figure, if you like. It's, it's really been this low. People have, have been used to inflation being much higher in the 70s. You know, you were looking at 17%. So this is a, a huge figure. And uh, one of the, the, the problems that people might, might think, think this is fantastic, more money to spend. The downside of this is that things like your mortgages are going to be uh, a bigger part of your debt burden for longer. So it means that the idea of with higher interest, it meant that the amount that you owed on your home became lower compared to how much you were earning. That's, that's not going to happen, so the debt is going to be bigger for longer. Yeah, I don't know when we last said zero was a huge figure. Uh, but in terms of uh, the Bank of England, of course, they're going to be looking at this. All the speculation has been that interest rates will go up at some point, possibly now, not till next year. Is there a chance, if these figures stay as they are, they may have to think of another cut? Well, that's something that they're looking at. But Mark Carney said in about 10th of March this year that that was something that he didn't want to do because this deflation um, or, or very zero inflation was down to the fact of the falling oil prices and he sees a long-term rise. So that's something they don't want to, to rush into. However, it is a, a, a slightly bigger than expected fall that we've seen. So what could happen is the interest rates will take longer before they rise up again. So we could see them staying at least uh, at the same level for uh, for the next year, certainly for the, for the next few months. Um, the uh, Bank of England certainly don't seem to be overly concerned. They're still thinking that they're going to be on target for um, a 2% uh, inflation figure by around 2019 and, and they say that they're still on target for that. Julie, thank you very much. Julie Peacock there with the latest inflation figure.